Hey, Connor. Hmm. What was your favorite part about Germany? Um, dancing on the street. Dancing on the street? Yeah. With all the music playing? Yeah. So what was your favorite part about dancing on the street? Um, doing this. <laughs> Germany has been on our bucket list for years, so to finally be here has been so surreal. We visited for about four days with the highlight of the trip being in Cologne. I want to start off with a question for you guys, but also be a little bit vulnerable here. So do you guys ever have like a singular memorable moment that consistently happens and almost becomes like a routine for your family? Um, I'm trying to think of an example, but like you go to the movies and you always go on a Friday night and you always get the same popcorn, same drink, same candy. It almost becomes like a tradition for your family. For us, anytime we visit any of these beautiful cities and there's a street performer or a musician, our kids just dance. They just let their hair down and dance. They don't care what anybody is thinking. They don't care if anybody is even looking. They just dance. And if there is anything that I could wish that stays with our kids, it is that I don't care what others think attitude because I think it'll it'll serve them well. And also if you didn't notice, I shot the narration here in the van. There's a reason for that. Babies are napping, there's noise machines going off everywhere and the big kids have taken over the living room. So I got sequestered to the van for this. There's a hierarchy here and I'm at the bottom of it. <laughs> So, P, what was your favorite part about Germany? The cathedral. The cathedral, why? Because it was super big. It was big? Big and pretty. <laughs> big and pretty? Yeah, it was. When you travel, especially as a kid, and consistently are exposed to the wonders of the world, you can potentially take it for granted. You know, the, the castles and the gardens and the cathedrals can get repetitive if you let it. So learning the history of each one of these gardens and castles and cathedrals is important. It's what makes them unique. So we try to implement these history lessons into the travels when we go to these cities so our kids have more of an appreciation for how significant they really are. Aiden. What? Not yet. Aiden. What? Okay. The Cologne Cathedral. Yes. Is also known as what? Or mainly known as what? The Clomer? Colner. Colner Dom. Colner Dom, nice. And how tall is it? More than 500 feet. More than 500 feet. And then what is a feature that it is widely known for? It's Twin Towers. Twin Towers. What was that? Twin, twin Towers! Twin Towers! Twin Towers! So what else did you like about it? Um, soft pretzels. The soft was, pretzels? Yeah. Cause Why? Because they were so yummy and I like food. Because <laughs> they were so yummy and you like food? Yeah. I can tell. 
Another tradition we have created along the way during our travels is in any of these cities we visit, we like to get the food that the city is known for or one of the foods that they're known for. You know, like in Belgium, it was the chocolate. In France, it was escargot. In Amsterdam, Netherlands, it was the Stroopwafel. And it is no different here in Cologne, Germany. And that is the soft pretzel. did you like about Germany? The Lock Bridge. The Lock Bridge. Why? Because it was full of colorful locks. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? So what did the locks mean? Do you remember? Yeah. Love. Love. Yeah. Love for whoever was on the lock, right? Mm -hmm. That it can't be broken. So what we do with the key? Toss it in the water. Who, who tossed it? Henry and... Carlos. Carlos. <laughs> You're right. Oh, Celia, Celia, Celia. Hi. <laughs> and of course, like I said before, we always love to witness and visit a more well-known feature of a city. And in Cologne, there is this bridge, a lock bridge, where there's a whole bunch of padlocks locked across the bridge. And what it represents is love. And the story has it is that back in the day, I'm not exactly sure when, there was a woman who lost a lover during World War I. So she would always revisit this bridge that they would always meet at and she would fix these padlocks. And what it represented to her, signified to her, was her unbreakable love to him. And this is a tradition that has spread across the world and there are several lock bridges in Europe. But the one in Cologne is called the Rhine Bridge. Look at the bridge. So we are at what is known as the lock bridge. It's right here behind me. We just bought a lock right here. Right here says the Young Family, May 2023. We're going to put it on the bridge. So what it represents is a love for whoever is written on the lock, so obviously our family, a love that cannot be broken. So you toss your key in the river, and it is a beautiful moment for our family, I think. Just an update on our future plans for this trip. As I mentioned in the last vlog, we were discussing whether we were going to keep traveling full time or get a home base of some sort. I think we're leaning towards a home base of some sort. Still not 100% sure, but we have been looking at houses in America. And if we do move back to America, it will be somewhere more in the South because we like warmer weather. We love to be outside most of the year. So we're thinking South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, something like that. But 
we have also been looking in the UK. Maxine has a lot of family on her mom's side that live in England, so we're looking at England as well. Now, I know that kind of contradicts the whole weather thing because it does rain a lot there, but we aren't sure if we want the UK to be like a permanent move. So it's still up in the air. We're still making decisions, but that's just an update. So thank you guys for watching. Love you guys. Subscribe.